Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned, No Before You Fly drone education campaign expands. Also, Sonin Hybrid UAV designed to serve first responders. And Canada's National Research Council tests drones against aircraft. Hi, I'm Kimberly Kay. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned Program, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned in partnership with AUVSI, the Association of Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. We have a packed episode for you today, so let's start with Drone Education Expands with its No Before You Fly campaign. AUVSI and AMA, along with the FAA, have confirmed that Consumer Technology Association has joined the UAS education campaign titled know before you fly. This provides prospective UAV operators with information and guidance they need to know to fly safely and responsibly. No Before You Fly was founded in 2014 as a collaborative effort between the industry and government to inform consumers and businesses what they need to know before taking the skies with a drone. The campaign includes a website, educational videos, a robust social media presence, and point-of-sale materials to ensure that prospective operators have the information and guidance on what they need to know. CTA is America's largest technology trade association, representing an industry that supports more than 18 million U.S. jobs. This powerful organization, which counts brands from startups to leading technology companies, strengths the campaign's capacity for outreach to the drone and non-drone communities. Coming up, drones are being used for much more than recording nice video from the sky. I'll explain after the break. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Introducing the new ELT-345 from Artex. This emergency locator transmitter, or ELT, boasts an industry low price, while providing the same quality and performance on which the Artex brand was built. GPS data is embedded within the first emergency transmission and provides search and rescue personnel with the aircraft location within 100 meters in less than a minute. Take to the skies knowing you have the highest performing and reliable equipment on board. View our selection of ELTs and safety products at www.artex.com. Artex, your best last chance. Welcome back. In the next Unmanned Minute, let's take a brief look at stories you need to know about. A new patent will help with UAVionics UAS remote identification. UAVionics has been granted a new patent critical to safe and secure integration of UAS into the NAS. The U.S. patent titled Direct Broadcast Remote Identification Device for Unmanned Aircraft Systems, it addresses the critical need for direct air-to-air -air transmission of UAS identification information without requiring use of cellular, satellite, or internet connectivity. If you break a drone while out in the field, there's a new repair kit. Fortress UAV is now offering a drone field repair kit. The kit will serve as an emergency option for drone operators who need a quick fix for maintenance while on site during a drone mission. The Fortress UAV drone repair kits are the size of a small, typical toolbox and include all the necessary consumable quick fix parts and accessories to quickly get your drone back in the air. Kits will be personalized for operators' drone make and model. North Carolina has a new way to inspect bridges thanks to a waiver. Drones are the NC Department of Transportation's newest tool in maintaining safety of the state's bridges and other infrastructures. The FAA has approved a waiver that allows the NCDOT to operate unmanned aircraft systems beyond visual line of sight while conducting bridge inspections. This approval is part of North Carolina's participation with the FAA 
UAS Integration Pilot Program, which is focused on testing and enabling new innovative uses of drone technology. And drones helping post-fire reforestation, something California is going to need, especially this year. Drone Seed reports that the FAA has approved its heavy lift drone swarms for operation beyond visual line of sight, or BVLOS. And given the go-ahead to expand its use of heavy lift drone swarms for reforestation in California, Colorado, Montana, Nevada, Arizona, and New Mexico, the FAA's action allows Drone Seed to begin reforestation in California once the fire is contained and airspace is clear. The company will select specific sites affected by fires later this month and is receiving information from impacted forest managers via Drone Seed. That was our Unmanned Minute. After these messages, we'll explain which new drone can recharge its batteries while in flight. If it looks good, it usually flies good. The Bristel series of aircraft is proof of that. Furthering their legacy of safety and efficiency, Bristel is proud to feature the Rotax 915 IS Turbo in the current lineup of aircraft. The 915 IS Turbo power plant offers more power than ever before in a light sport aircraft. Learn more about Bristel at www.sportflyingusa.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. There's a new type of drone designed to serve first responders. Atlanta-based drone manufacturer Soden Hybrid has just unveiled a 100 mile per hour drone built exclusively for first responders thanks to a waiver. The Sonin Hybrid Recruit has a fully equipped flight time over three hours and can reach speeds almost three times faster than most fastest commercial drones currently available. Despite the number of police, firefighters, and government officials flying drones as part of their duty to protect and serve, Few drones are designed for first responders. The limitations of battery-powered drones prevent first responders from executing longer missions and carrying additional equipment that can extend their capabilities. The Recruit drone uses Sonin's hybrids gasoline and battery-powered system to recharge batteries while in flight. The Recruit is also equipped with a high-tech payload including 3x optical or 12x digital zoom, 4K video camera with fixed and mobile target tracking, forward-looking infrared camera with night vision, PA speakers, spotlights, and additional sensors for first responder missions. The recruit reportedly can fly longer and faster than most drones. What do you do when a drone collides with an aircraft? Well, Canada is testing that out. Canada's NRC has been busy looking into the potential hazards created when a drone collides with an aircraft. A recently published report further documents that issue. The NRC Aerospace Research Center has been performing bird impact testing both on aircraft structures, windshields, as well as engines since the 1960s. Over that period, NRC's bird guns were used to fire real birds, gelatin synthetic birds, as well as steel balls. The later test aimed at certifying a bulletproof windshield of a fighter aircraft with firing a ball with a velocity reaching 668 knots. They say that the main objective of this collaborative work between Transport Canada, Defence Research and Development Canada, and National Research Council Canada is to perform a series of experiments simulating impacts when a drone and various aircraft components like a windshield or wing sections at typical operating conditions of both the aircraft and drone. Well, that does it for our show today. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. Don't forget to subscribe to YouTube and check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and on Twitter. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is currently operating on our winter schedule and is streamed Monday and Friday with Airborne Unmanned, alternating with Airborne Flight Training each Wednesday. 
We hope you enjoy the show. We'll see you next time.